Hi there, it's Peter here again, the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front-end development. In today's video, we will continue building the Webpack project and the configuration file. And we will more specifically look at the HTML Webpack plugin. Now we can create index.html inside of the dist folder, index.html, and we'll create a simple HTML markup here. Change it to project and in the body, we'll have a simple message content goes here. And if we would link the source, uh, the bundle JS the old way, we would just simply type in script, src will be app.bundle.js. And that is the old way how we would include the JavaScript file on the page. And if I right click and preview this file in the browser, we should see the console log inside of the console. Okay, so the file is linked to this file. If you're using VS Code and you can't see this open file in a browser, just install extension, which is called open in a browser. Okay, from Decker. So that's how I open that file in a browser. Later on, we'll see how we can create a development server. So instead of looking at the file, we will look at a localhost 8080. Okay, but we'll get to it a little bit later. For now, we're just simply opening the file in a browser to see our changes. Okay, so this is how you create your template manually, but we can use a Webpack HTML plugin to generate this template for us. We'll go back to the terminal and type in npm i HTML Webpack plugin. Don't forget to include the save dev to include it into the dependencies. And we can see it now included inside of the package JSON. And now we'll need to add it to the Webpack config. What to add to here, we'll find out from the documentation of the plugin itself. So I'll link to it under the video. We've already installed it and now we'll need to continue with the configuration. So we'll copy this var HTML Webpack plugin and paste it at the top of our Webpack config. And the next thing we'll need to include is also these plugins. Copy the plugins array and paste it inside of the Webpack config, comma after the output and we'll paste it in. Okay, so these plugins will be an array of other plugins where we can keep adding stuff later on. For now, we'll just start the plugins object or array like this. And if you compare our config with the basic usage of the HTML Webpack plugin, you'll see that the output is broken down into path and file name. Okay, so we'll need to do that as well. We'll need to break it up. Path is now the dist folder and we can simply remove it from here like this. Okay, so we've broken it down and the reason is because the HTML plugin will use this dist folder to create the index file for us. Okay, so I'll rename this file to index old because that's the static index HTML, but we want to see that we now creating the index HTML using the Webpack plugin. We'll save everything and run npm run dev in the terminal. And now you can see that two files are generated. One is called app.bundle.js and one is called index.html. Okay, so we've got an old file where we manually link the script and then we've got generated index.html which links the bundle.js as well. Okay, so now we've got the index.html dynamically created by Webpack HTML plugin. Now let's delete the old HTML so it doesn't get in our way. We'll delete it and we'll be working just with the generated index.html. But what if we want to customize it? What if we want to change the title and have our own custom template, but still generated by the Webpack plugin? So the default 
template generated by this plugin is included in here. And if you want to customize it, there is a section a little bit down here, writing your own templates. So if it doesn't meet your needs, you can easily create your own template. And as you can see, all you need to do is to configure the HTML Webpack plugin for that. So copy this new HTML Webpack, Webpack plugin, paste it inside of the web config. like this and now this title describes what will be inside of the title so we'll change that to project and the template is my index ejs we'll change that to just index.ejs and we'll reference it inside of the .src folder so that's where we will have our initial template We'll save it and we'll create this file inside of the source folder, index.ejs. We can copy the HTML from the index.html, remove the script tag at the bottom and just write our own custom content here. And this is our initial template. We'll just change the title to project as well. And this file will be now used to generate our index HTML. If we quit the build and run it again, we should see the file regenerated. And now it includes our content goes here and also includes that. So now we've got it perfectly working the way we want it. And as you can see inside of the template itself, we not including any script tags. Okay, these are automatically generated and injected into the template by the Webpack HTML plugin. So remember your HTML EJS should not include any reference to style sheet or JavaScript files. They are automatically injected by the Webpack plugin. I'll change the syntax to be HTML just so we can get Emmet working as well. If, yep, that is working fine. So you've got it working. If we want this title to be what we define inside of the configuration, then this is the snippet for that. So we're looking for the HTML Webpack plugin dot options dot title. And if I replace that inside of the template, we've got dynamically generated. So project demo. And if I quit the build, npm run dev again, we should see the new title generated. Oh, it didn't generate because I didn't save the template. Okay, let's see if it's now working. It is. Okay, so we've got dynamic title, scripts injecting later on. If we include CSS, same thing will be injected into the same template. The file itself doesn't have to be .ejs, it could be simply .html as well. The .ejs, it's embedded JavaScript templates mode for Node. So if you're familiar with that, you can keep using e .ejs, but if you want to simply include .html, change the config to point to index.html inside of your source folder and Webpack should work exactly the same way. Okay, so now I'm generating the file from index.html and everything works fine too. The next thing we'll look at is how to minify your HTML. You've seen a couple of websites where the generated index HTML or any HTML page has everything minified on one line and that, sends, that saves some bandwidth. So we remove the white space and to do that, we'll need to create one more option inside of the HTML Webpack plugin. We'll type in minify and empty object. And inside of this object, we'll need to define what are the parameters, what are the options for the minify. So we want to collapse white space. We want to turn it to true. 
and this will remove all the white space in the file. We need to include the comma after the minify. And if I save it, quit the build and run it again, then we should see the index.html in the dist folder to have everything minified. Okay, as you can see now it's all one line. And that's how you minify your HTML. The other handy option is a hash. So there's an option which is called hash. And if we set that to true and run it again, oops, run it again, then you see the index HTML, the app.bundle.js has this question mark and a dynamically generated hash. Okay, so this is the name of the file is changing and this is a very handy if you want to see whether you're uploading the latest files. So this will be every after every build, this number will change. Okay, so if I go to the index here, content goes here and some other content, save it. We should see that number changed. Okay, we couldn't see it because I didn't have it here, but trust me, this number is saved or is changed on every build. Okay, here is the hash that matches the hash inside of the file name. Okay, so it's apple, uh, it's app.bundle.js and then the hash appended to the file name. We've covered the most used options for this plugin, but feel free to explore the configuration and all the other options on your own. And in the next video, we will look how to work with styles inside of your Webpack project. And that's it all for today. Hope you've learned something new. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let me know in the comments what do you think about this series. Until next time, happy coding, bye!